Hi, this is Tyler Disney with Integral Group, and this is video four in a series on families. So in this video, we've got our family, our heat exchanger family, and we've already loaded all the shared parameters into it that we think we want. And the next step is to get it on a schedule. So if you look in the project browser, your project should have, under schedules and quantities, a bunch of schedules already ready to go. So these are the schedules that we've already created in the past um, for use with families with shared parameters in them. So more or less, they should just work. So we lucked out. We found that we have a heat exchanger schedule that's already been made, so we'll use that. If you don't find a schedule that you're looking for, um, watch the next video and we'll talk about how to build one from scratch. It's not that hard. So go ahead and open it up. And you can see that um, even though we have a heat exchanger family in the project, it's not populating the schedule. And the reason for that is that we have these schedules, each of these schedules f set to filter mechanical equipment families based on the type mark parameter. Because we don't want every single piece of mechanical equipment to show up in this list, right? We just want the heat exchangers. So over here, these are the controls for the um, schedule. They control what goes in and how it looks and all that. So go ahead and hit edit on fields. And so these are all the shared parameters that are in this schedule. That should look familiar. And you can control that. You can remove and you can add parameters if you like. But over here in the filter, we can see that this schedule is being filtered uh, for mechanical equipment families that have a type mark set to capital HX. So that's what we need to know. So we can cancel out of that, go to our family, hit edit type, scroll down to type mark and change it to heat exchanger. And there we go. Great. So most of these parameters are instance parameters, which means we'll be able to edit them uh, right here in the, uh, in the schedule. Uh, manufacturer, like I'm, I'm trying to click and I can't click on it, that's one we're going to take a look at. Um, I can't edit it and I want to know why. So I'm going to go back to my family, hit edit type again, scroll down, and I see that the manufacturer parameter is grayed out. And I'm not sure why that is. That typically means it's locked. For example, the model here is, um, is not locked. I can edit it, but the manufacturer is locked. And it's fine that it says TACO. I just want it to be all caps. So I'm going to edit my family going to go into family types, going to go down and find manufacturer, and I see that they've nicely locked it to the string. So I'm just going to delete that, change this to taco, hit OK, load into the project, overwrite the existing version. So there's a bit of back and forth that you sometimes have to do fixing and tweaking parameters. OK, great. And since it's a type parameter, it's saying it's going to change, it's going to apply this change to all, all of this family type, and that's fine. OK, and so I can go through here and change, you know, all the parameters I want to how I like my schedules to look. Now here, this is an interesting um, point. Whenever you see this, which is um, a unitless number, you want to be careful. Because in Revit, all of these values are, uh, they have units attached to them. Revit knows if it's a, uh, a cooling load, a heating load, if it's a temperature, if it's a pressure, and it assigns a unit to it. So even though this heading says capacity tons, this is just text. I could change this to say, you know, whatever I want. Um, so just because the heading says one thing doesn't mean that the unit is actually um, what I want it to be. So I'm going to go look at this. And the way I look at this is in formatting. And I'm going to select heat exchanger capacity, because that's the one I'm looking at. And I'm going to say field format. And I see that um, the, uh, the units are set to tons. And I see that the unit symbol is set to none. So if I added that, put that to ton and hit OK, 
there it is, it shows up. So let's say I want this to be 20 tons. And I don't want this to be absolute zero. I want this to be, um, I don't know, 60 degrees. I'm believing to be uh, 70 GPM to be 1,000. And I want the water pressure drop to be 0.01 feet, for example. So I can just go through my schedule and update the values however I want. And you'll notice that uh, with I try to build these schedules so that out of the box, all of the parameters do have their units on them. And that's so that when you first look at it, you know what unit Revit thinks that value is. So for example, if this was set to BTUs per hour by default, you would know that and you would know to go in, change its units to tons, and then you could take off the unit if you really wanted to, if that's the way you want your um, schedule to display. So that's pretty much it um, in terms of writing up the uh, schedule. I won't fill this out and bore you. Um, don't put commas in. Um, but what I am going to do is uh, put this on a sheet because it's pretty useless without being on a sheet. So find your section, find your schedule sheet, mo2 schedules. Find the heat exchanger schedule and just drag and drop, and there it is. All right, so that's pretty much it. Um, if you do find a schedule that you need that you don't have, um, in the next video, I'm going to go over how to build one. Cheers.